Okay, so let's see if I can do this next one a little quicker, okay? So here we are given x squared, y squared, and the question is, where is this defined? Well, this one has a domain of all real numbers, so negative infinity to infinity, and a range also. Great, so there are no limitations on the domain and range when I'm solving this problem. Fantastic, but I checked. Now, when I look at the slope field, does the slope field agree with your reasoning? Yes, there are no vertical tangent lines, or in other words, there are no missing tangent lines. So therefore, I can see that there is no differential equation, no part of the differential equation that is not defined. I also notice when x is 0, the slopes are 0, and when y is 0, the slopes are 0. So now it says sketch a solution at x equals 0, y equals 3. So I go to 0, 3. I always plot the point first. And then remember, I try to run parallel to the curves. So I'm going to run parallel to the curves. Now this one's a little tricky. It's telling me to go down, and then it's telling me to go over, and then it's telling me to go horizontal. Interesting. That is a quirky graph. So as I go to negative infinity, the graph approaches 0, and then, you know, it kind of changes concavity at 0, 3. Let's see what the algebra solution is. So now I'm going to separate. So whenever you see find a solution or solve a differential equation, that's when you separate, integrate, integrate, add a C. So I'm going to divide by y squared. 1 over y squared dy is equal to x squared dx. And I'm just going to write this in power form so that it's easier to take the integral. And then I'm going to integrate both sides. So separate, integrate, integrate. So I'm going to add a 1, so I get y to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. I'm going to add a 1, x to the third, over 3, separate, integrate, integrate, add a c. Do you know if you do that correctly on an FRQ, you'd get five stinking points just for that. Now let me clean this up a little bit before I write the general solution. So this is the general solution. Now, I want to find a particular solution at the given point, and the point they give me is 0, 3. So I'm going to plug in 0, 3. So I get negative 1 third is equal to 0 plus c, so therefore c is equal to negative 1 third. Fantastic! So I'm going to substitute negative 1 third back into the general solution, so I get negative 1 over y x cubed plus 3 minus 1 third. And my job now is to solve for y. Well, I see I have y in the denominator. Now I can take the reciprocal only if the left side is a fraction and the right side is a fraction. That means I have a common denominator. Well, this worked out nice because the denominators were already the same. So now I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. So I get negative y equals 3. Now remember, I can only do that if I have a proportion. Now I take the opposite, so y equals negative 3 over x cubed minus 1. Nice! That is worth so many points if you can do that process. Good job. Now let's just check the point 0, 3. Let's make sure it makes this equation true. So I'm going to substitute 0, 3. So 3 equals negative 3 over 0 cubed minus 1. So does 3 equal a negative 3 over negative 1? It sure does. Fantastic. Now sometimes a follow-up question will be, what is the domain and range of your solution? So if I look at the graph along with the equation, I can see that the domain is, is from negative infinity all the way to 1. It appears that there is a vertical asymptote there for this particular function. Now remember, I want my solution to be a continuous function including 0, 3. Now, what about the range? What do the y values look like? Well, it looks like y is everything greater than 0. So I would say from 0 to infinity. Now, does this domain and range fit within the original? Well, yeah, the original was all real numbers, so no problem there. Is the solution a function? In other words, does it pass the vertical line test? Yeah, it does. And we already checked the initial point, 0, 3. Fantastic. Now, let's do one more. 
We're on a roll here, folks. So the next last problem is we have 2x plus 1 times y plus 1. Now again, they ask me about the domain and range. Well here, no problem again. The domain is all real numbers. The range is all real numbers. So there's no restrictions that I have to worry about. Now when I look at my slope field, do I see any missing tangent lines? No, I don't. I see a few zeros, which makes sense, because when y equals negative 1, those should be zeros, and when x equals negative 1 half, those should be zeros. Okay, fantastic. Now, they want us to sketch the solution that goes to the point negative 1, 1. So I go over negative 1, up 1. Well, that reaches right there. Now, I'm looking at this, I'm a little confused of what to do because I see that I'm supposed to go down but then up. You know what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to check what is the slope at negative one half, one half. I just want to make sure that when I draw this solution curve, I'm good. So if I were to plug this point in, and I can always plug in any points at negative one half, one half, what would happen is negative one half times two is negative one. Ah, oh, check that out, I'm gonna get a slope of zero. So here I have a slope of zero. Well, that makes a lot more sense. So now when I draw in this curve through the point, it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna flatten out and then I'm gonna come back up. Fantabulous. Okay, well let's see if my algebraic solution matches the graphical solution. Again, we're going to separate, integrate, integrate, add a C. Well, how do I move when I have multiplied by one y plus 1? Well, I'm going to divide by one plus one, y plus 1. Okay, and then I have 2x plus 1 dx. Separate, get a point for doing that. Integrate, integrate. If you can integrate, integrate the left side correctly, you get another point. Natural log of y plus 1. Nice job. If you can integrate this side, you'll get another point. 2x squared over 2 plus x. And then if you remember to add a c, you get a fifth point. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I'll just clean it up a little bit. Now this is the general solution to my differential equation. Okay, but I want the particular solution. I want the solution given the value negative 1, 1. So I'll plug in negative 1, 1 into this function, and I'm going to get 1 plus 1 is equal to negative 1 squared plus 1 plus c. So I get the natural log of 2, um, whew, I'm running out of breath, <laughs> is equal to negative, wait, did I do that wrong? Oh, whew, little mistake there. Oh, this, so it's plus a negative 1. So I get 0 plus c, which is c. So c is the natural log of 2. So let's plug that back into my general solution. Natural log of l plus 1 equals. Now, if you also plug in the initial condition correctly, you get a sixth point. Can you believe that? So you'd have six points just for doing this part of an FRQ correctly. Now solving can be hard. It's worth one point, but let's give it our best shot. So we're going to undo natural log. That means I raise both sides to the e. So I end up with the absolute value of y plus 1 equals e to the x squared plus x plus natural log of 2. You know what? Can I reduce this natural log of 2 somehow? Why, yes I can, if I use the rules of exponents. Because when you're adding powers, that's the same as multiplying with the same base. So I can rewrite this exponential function as a product of the same base. And then check this out, you guys. That will reduce to the value 2. So I, you're right. So I end up with 2e to the x squared plus x. That's some crazy algebra right there. Now when we undo absolute value, we get plus or minus 2e to the x squared plus x. And don't forget to subtract that one. Wow, pretty cool. Don't you feel proud of yourself for being able to do that? Now I do have to check, is it going to be the positive solution or is it going to be the negative solution? So remember, my initial value is negative 1, 1. So we're going to do a check. I'm kind of running out of room here. So let's see, um, my check, I'll do it down here. 
So the check of negative 1, 1. So let's try the positive solution. So 1 equals 2 e to the negative 1 squared plus 1 minus 1. Well, that gives me 2, and the negative 1 squared is 1 plus 1. So I end up getting, um, oh, I keep forgetting that plus x. That's x is a negative 1, so it should be minus 1. There we go. So negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So e to the 0 is 1, so I get 2 minus 1. Yay, that works. Now, will the negative value work? No, of course not, because I'd get a negative 2 e to the 0 minus 1, which doesn't make sense because I'd get negative 2 minus 1. So this is not a true statement. So my solution is the positive 2 e to the x squared plus x minus 1. Wow, great work, you guys. Now, what are the domain and range? Well, I really don't have to worry because the initial domain and range was all real numbers. But if I look at my given solution, I can see that the range is going to be above that vertex, which we determined was at negative 1 half, 1 half. So it's going to be from 1 half to infinity. <laughs> I like that infinity. Now the domain, we notice it's all real numbers. So does this domain and range satisfy the initial? It sure does. Phew! Nice work, everyone.